worship, a time of patience, humility, self-discipline, and submissiveness to God. During the holy month, Radio Sultanate of Oman 90.4 FM takes you on a journey, journey from spiritual reflection and enlightenment to family entertainment. Join us all day and all night long here on the Nation Station. Radio Sultanate of Oman 90.4 FM is all set to bring you Let's Connect. Let's Connect. A soul searching program which is about a journey of self discovery hosted by Reem. 12 noon to 1 p.m. Sunday to Thursday. Send your questions to 90406 or call us at 246 02058. Let's Connect here on the Nation Station. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Peace be with you all. Welcome to Let's Connect, your Ramadan radio program. Let's Connect in this season of Ramadan focuses on values, understanding values, and how to live our values for a better self, society, and nation, inshallah. In the last episode, we spoke on the value of forgiveness. If you missed that episode, you can find it online at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash 321connect. That's the number three, the number two, and the number one, and the word connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T. We are now live on the air daily from Sunday to Thursday. We welcome your call at the number 2460 2058 that's 2460 you can also send us an sms text message at the number 90406 that's 90406 and we'd love to hear from you very much Assalamu alaikum Ali. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you Ali? I'm good. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. So how was the weekend? Uh well it wasn't as I expected. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Expectations. Expect- that kind of links to our value of today, actually. Really? Yes. Because oh. the value of today um, is sometimes challenging to implement when our expectations are not aligned. Yeah. The value of today has the power, however, to bring us um, inner peace. The value of today is linked to the concept of time. And we are living in a time where we often say, it's a fast-paced world. Mm. And that brings us to the value of today. Patience. Patience. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bismillah, today we're going to talk about patience, understanding patience, what are the challenges, and learning from examples that can inspire us to have a proper understanding of living this value. Mm. So, we'll start by defining patience. Well, patience is uh, is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay difficulty or annoyance mm-hmm. without without in you know, getting angry or upset and if 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 i put it in a simple english i would say mm-hmm. it means not showing annoyance or anger with people or things that aren't acting as we desire mm-hmm. and and of course uh, there there are many many situations if mm-hmm. if you think about it there are many situations where you could actually lose patience mm-hmm. let, let me because the expectations yeah, yeah. wasn't uh, yeah, because there was an expectation yeah, about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll give you a, a few examples, such as a traffic jam you know, mm-hmm. during rush hour while you're going to work. Yes. You know, and this happens almost every day, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you, st- you actually start thinking about it from the night before. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, if I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'll be stuck in traffic. Mm. Now that, See, imagine if you were looking forward to it. Yeah, yes, impatient. I'm looking forward to lose my patience. You know, imagine, <laughs> think about it that way. Because you know, some people actually use traffic as an opportunity to hear like lectures, audio CDs, like a, a, a mobile library, a moving library. Yeah. So because their expectation is different. Exactly. Actually, they don't feel impatient. Yeah, they, they don't, mm. maybe they, they don't use their time, you know, they're just busy driving and, and okay, yeah, which is fine. You know, it's Mm-mm. good to focus on, on what you're doing and you're driving, but, you know, they are always ways to cover that up mm. so that's one of the things which is uh, it happens every day you know mm-hmm. except weekends uh, and also another thing is once you are in the office mm-hmm. your boss starts giving you a hard time you know more work 
Uh-huh. Yeah, you already have work that you haven't completed from the last two, three days or three weeks, mm-hmm. and then your boss comes with more work, extra work. Take this. Mm-hmm. How would you feel? Of course, you're gonna lose your patience. Mm-hmm. So in here, you've linked it with the concept of pressure and stress. Mm-hmm. Stress can make us lose uh, yeah, our patience. Yeah, uh-huh. I mean that's part of patience, losing yes, patience. Yes. Uh, another one would be, you know, you're waiting in a queue in a bank or you know somewhere where you have to pay your bills. And uh, you start losing patience because you're late. You know, you, you're waiting there, you're standing there in a queue, and your turn is not there yet. Mm. Uh, although nowadays you know, it became a little bit easier because the moment you enter, you have this little ticket that mm-hmm. you pull, yes. and then you sit down for you an hour. Sit down, <laughs> relax. <laughs> exactly. Oh Sometimes no, you are long. not kidding. Yes. You're not <laughs> kidding. It happens. You know, some places it takes mm. you even more than an hour. Yes. And and when you actually know that it's going to take that much time, you actually leave the place and come back again. Mm. You plan around. Y- it, you yeah. plan around. So people start shouting and saying, "Okay, I'm not a type of a person who would sit down and read a book, you know, and mm. be useful to myself and the community. Mm. No, I would prefer sitting down, looking at each person, be entering, grumpy. you know, be grumpy." <laughs> Oh, who's entering? Who's going out? Who's shouting at the guy at the desk and you mm. know, complaining? Say, Let me just enjoy the, the scene and maybe I'll pull up my telephone and start video, you know, filming those people <laughs> and then sending them uh, to other friends. Mm-hmm. So we are losing patience because you know, mm. we don't have anything to fill that gap while we are waiting. And we've, again, bringing it to the idea of a fast-paced uh, world is that the expectation of of results of speed now is even faster. It's, we expect things quickly. Yeah, even yeah. in terms of um, service, we expect things to be done quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's so fast you can't even imagine it. Mm. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's not just about you know the what's happening in the in the new life or the modern life, but also what used to happen in the past and keep happening. Like for example, you fighting. You know, mm-hmm. you're fighting with your friend, or with spouse, or with neighbors. Mm-hmm. So while you're fighting, you're actually you're shouting, your, your voice increases. So mm-hmm. you don't listen to the other person and you try to, you know, just jump on whatever he's saying, you know, without giving that person time to finish talking. So, you know, pa- patience and the other person is not patient. Mm-hmm. So, you know what interrupting happens? Interrupting one another. You guys interrupting each other and then there's no solution for what, you know, the trouble that you're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's one of the things. And another thing which is also common is uh, a person who's trying to lose weight and getting, you know, trying to get that nice shape. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, fit, everything uh, else. Yeah, fit, six pack. But you want that to happen immediately. Mm, now. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just joined the gym a week ago. Mm-hmm. Why do you expect me to have six packs? Mm-hmm. I don't even have two packs. I have one big pack, mm-hmm. which is yet to be, you know... <laughs> And well, this links us to discipline as well. Yeah. That with yeah. patience comes discipline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, let me ask this question. Uh, maybe this is, uh, this can be done as an ad, you know. Mm-hmm. Would you like to see things happen to you in an instant? Do you want to achieve a goal, but you want it to happen right now rather than later? Mm-hmm. Well, if you want that, then you may actually be doing yourself more harm than good. That's because in order to excel in life and achieve your goals, you need to utilize the power of patience. Take one step at a time. That's the key. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I remember uh, one time this person uh, called me and uh, they wanted me to deliver a talk for, for an hour or two. And I told them, okay, I'll do that. And they asked me how much, you, what's your charge? So I gave them my charges. Mm-hmm. And and then I I got this response that, oh, they say you're too expensive and... Uh, and I don't think uh, in one or two hours, you know, people will learn anything. Mm-hmm. You know, they need to have a four day program or a week program. And I would say to people like that and to everybody is, you know, God did not create the heavens and the earth in one day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one step at a time. You were, you were not born as an adult. What are you trying to do is no difference from trying to microwave your food rather than cooking it nicely and slowly. And mm-hmm. you know what happens. But when you when you you know when you try and change people say, oh okay, I'll I'll give you a training program for four days and that will change you. It it won't. It doesn't matter whether it's one hour, one minute or one week. It's it takes a, time. It's a process. Yeah. It's also like 
when we work on ourselves, on our character building, on our, our development, mm-hmm. um, sometimes you might get anxious in terms of, oh, I want quick results, or I want to have developed that k- skill set mm-hmm. right away. But oftentimes, is you might learn about it, um, but then it, there's a phase of practicing it, there's mm-hmm. a phase of trial and error, there's a phase of being tested with it in different contexts, and that's how you can really nurture that. And especially as, since we're talking in these series mm-hmm. uh, of programs about values, mm-hmm. even building, nurturing those values within us, building that capacity takes time. Yeah. We, we get challenged in yeah. terms of our values and how we're living them, but it also tests us. Yeah. An important element that I think we should also be aware of is the difference between being passive and proactive. That patience mm. doesn't mean being passive in terms of I just sit you know, and wait mm. and expect uh, things, things to, to happen. happen to me. I mean, even even in tribulations and tough times when we have patience, we think that patience means just sitting back. But you can actually do proactive things to get yourself out of that, you know, negative feeling mm-hmm. of that calamity, of that tragedy that you face. Yeah. Um, try, try changing the, the environment within yourself and mm-hmm. around you. So I think it's important to understand that patience doesn't mean just being passive, yeah, yeah, but it's it's being proactive, proactive. and being patient for the results to show up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. I like you know, being patient for the result. Yes. But yeah. you need to do something. You need to take an action. Yeah. Now, don't just wait. Ah, yeah. 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 I mean, we, we we spoke about, for example, the service area. We mm-hmm. were said, you know, you get your number, you're waiting, mm-hmm. um, and so from one side, it doesn't mean accepting when things are not efficient, mm-hmm. effective, but you know. Um, trying to motivate that change, um, sending your feedback to the say customer service mm-hmm. about it, and being patient that they will work on the results. But it doesn't mean uh, being yeah, passive. Yeah, I, I mean, because anyway, you, you're dealing with how many customers? You know, mm-hmm. you're dealing with many customers. So mm-hmm. even if you try to speed it up, I mean, it's the same thing. Yes. We'll go on a prayer break right now, and we'll be back. Our listeners, now it's time for a call to prayers, Adhan al Bohr, according to the local timing of Muscat and its suburbs. Those who reside outside Muscat Governorate have to notice the difference in timing. Radio Sultanate of Oman. spiritual reflection and worship, a time of patience, humility, self-discipline, and submissiveness to God. During the holy month, Radio Sultanate of Oman 90.4 FM takes you on a journey, journey from spiritual reflection and enlightenment to family entertainment. Join us all day and all night long here on the Nation Station. Radio, Sultan of Oman, 90.4 FM, is all set to bring you 
Let's Connect. Let's Connect. A soul-searching program which is about a journey of self-discovery hosted by Reem. 12 noon to 1 p.m. Sunday to Thursday. Send your questions to 90406 or call us at 246-02058. Let's Connect here on the Nation Station. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Let's Connect, your Ramadan radio program. Our topic today is on patience. We were discussing how we understand patience, examples of impatient um, times in our lives, and also to see how patience does not mean being passive, does not mean just being in waiting mode, but also being proactive while we wait for the result. Also, there's a scholar, Ali uh, Nasr al-Din, who defined patience, which is sabar in Arabic, as restraining the self from agitation when confronted with undesirables. And it goes back to what you have mentioned is, it's really about our inner environment and how we respond to the external environment and expectations. Mm. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. we talked already about uh, you know the modern life and you mm-hmm. know, nowadays we're, we're blessed with so many things, but we're not happy. Mm. Uh, we're becoming more impatient because of you know the fast changes in technology. Mm-hmm. If you're flying on an airplane uh, and, and the plane is late for 20 minutes, you lose patience. Mm-hmm. If your computer doesn't start in 20 seconds, uh, you lose patience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If your picture is not sent to your WhatsApp friend in two seconds, you lose patience. And then when you lose patience, you know what happens? You start blaming the computer, Stressed. you start blaming the Wi-Fi, the, the, the telecom company, the, the country, the government, uh, blame Ali and Reem, you know, start blaming the whole world. And if that is not enough, mm-hmm. you start blaming God. Mm. Why? Why? Me? Why, why, me? why this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Actually, it's I'm, interesting because I'm, in a technology... I'm losing my patience with it. <laughs> <laughs> Impatient with impatience. Yeah. That's, that doesn't cancel each other out. Sorry, Ali. Oh, no. That's just being impatient. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, with technology times as well, again, it goes back to we're used to the fast-paced uh, life. And I think we need to know um, when we need to be patient mm-hmm. and when we just need to proactively handle the situation mm-hmm. and even promptly end with speed. However, as you pointed out and we discussed, without that inner agitation. I think mm. this is the thing we go back to in definitions of patience is that it's it's not about avoiding dealing with the undesirables or the unexpected Mm -hmm. but it's without the inner agitation inside so Mm -hmm. knowing how to deal with that and then you just deal with the external environment we have a call assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam alaikum assalam welcome to let's connect ramadan mubarak shukran shukran Shukran. you know this voice ali Ah, uh, sounds like uh, Qais. A special voice, Qais. Yes, oh, Qais and Tuvi, welcome. Alaykum, Qais. <laughs> How are you, Qais? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, Qais, today we're talking about the value of patience. Uh, and I, I personally think Kais is a patient person. <laughs> are you? Yes, he, he, has, okay. he has moments he, of presence. Let's pause for five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> <Just it. laughs> I'm testing Moment his patience. <laughs> ah, yeah. see, I like what Kai said. When you said ah. pause for, for five seconds, he said he, moment he of goes, silence. Wow. So he saw the value he, He's an expert in the field. <laughs> <laughs> Kai, you're the right person we're talking okay. to. Tell us your thoughts on patience. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I don't know why you choose me for this topic. but uh... <laughs> You just proved it, by the way, the moment yeah. of silence. You saw the value. I like, I like it so much. I like it uh, because uh, nowadays I think it's uh, one of the most uh, values that we need it in our daily life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, you know everything uh, now is uh, is too crowded and uh, many things that will take like too much time to be done mm-hmm. and a lot of works. Uh, so one of the good things that uh, I really apply it in my life uh, is uh, if I want. To do something, uh, really, I I will do my best mm-hmm. to make it done. But uh, to wait the output or the like, the replay or the like, if there is anything needs to be approved or something. Mm-hmm. I will be as much as I can patient. 
Okay. So that that means uh, I'm waiting for the replay, but at the same time, I, I, I'm not that much stressed or uh, um, uh, just uh, following this thing, but just uh, let it go. So whenever it will come back, uh, mm-hmm. or I will I will keep uh, tracking it, uh, but uh, uh, not as much as attached to, to this thing to come back again, but uh, just to let it go. Okay, you're using very important phrases here. Mm. Letting it go, tracking it, not being attached. Very powerful concepts. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is one of the values that I believe is really uh, affecting my personality. So, uh, all the time, uh, most of the time, actually, I will be like cool and uh, mm-hmm. uh, relaxed. Uh, so, I like that. Okay. Um, Qais, uh, I want to ask you a question. Uh, you, you're into filming, right? Yes. Uh, can you tell me how you handle, you know, how, how, how you handle yourself, how, how you become so patient with, you know, the actors and uh, you know, the, the situations during filming? Because I know it's, it's not easy, you know, to, uh, it's, it's a bit difficult. I've, I've, I've gone through this phase, you know, where people used to film me and I used to film people and I used to lose patience, you know, for, for, for some reason, you know. So can you tell us some, some of the examples that you had? Okay, first of all, <clears throat> one of the, the most important things uh, to be working in this field mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is uh, to be like uh, very uh, disconnected from the, the outside world. So if okay. we are filming something, mm-hmm. Uh, so we are really focused in in this particular thing mm-hmm. uh, till it will be end. So, for example, if we are filming like uh, ten seconds, for example, for advertisement or for a short uh, short video, mm-hmm. ten seconds. That means uh, it will require not less than like four or five hours. Mm. A practical. So, way of that so that. 10 seconds that you, you will see it in YouTube or on, or on the TV, mm-hmm. uh, it will take like five hours of like preparation or even uh, the post-production or etc. But uh, the good thing is to uh, to keep like if there is any scenes that you need to, to repeat it again and again, or sometimes you repeat it again and again, and you will the next day you will uh, shoot it again. Mm-hmm. So uh, in this field, it's need to be planned, but at the same time, because you don't know what is the conditions that you will face uh, during uh, the, the operation, the whole operation. So we need to be like really uh, uh, calm, really relaxed mm-hmm. during the, the, this operation. But don't don't you lose patience? Huh? He sounds calm and focused. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, don't are, distract are you always, him. Are you always honest? calm like this? <laughs> He's he's testing your patience. <laughs> yeah, sometimes to be honest, yes, because uh, sometimes uh, you will reach like if you are not sleeping like three or four days, uh, like two hours every day, so oh. you'll be too much stressful. So mm. that mm. means sometimes you can you can lose, yeah. But uh, mostly, uh, I believe, uh, yes, I can control my. Health. Excellent, mm. and guys, because you're you're highlighting an important point in terms of, in a way. We're interacting with the outside world. We're taking a role in it, but we're disconnected in mm. terms of that the things that are outside of our control, um, we kind of just track them, as I said. We track how it is, mm-hmm. but not a feeling impatient if it didn't work mm-hmm. out as expected. We are, we do our part and then we let go. And that's also part of trust and taqwa in Allah. Yeah. That, yes. uh, you know, the result that happened is what Allah wishes it to happen. Mm-hmm. But we we do take, we do yeah. take by reasons. We do take part. Mm-hmm. So Qais, because you mentioned about, um, you know, um, disconnecting um, and then just doing your part. So, and it's also about having that inner self-connection. How, how do you develop that? Yeah, I wanted to say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, um, it's not one day like process or something you will read it and uh, mm-hmm. just apply it in your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just something uh, you believe first of all it's, it will be something good for for yourself mm-hmm. even if not your, for yourself only even the people you will deal with every day yes. uh, because everyone is uh, at work or even uh, with family or friends uh, we are facing many many things but uh, it's something to believe first of all is is 
will add value for yourself. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, if you believe in that, you will actually you will start looking for uh, uh, for techniques, for ways that you will avoid uh, lose your patience, uh, even uh, if you are in the middle of a huge project or you are working like something you need to deliver it uh, within a very short time. Mm-hmm. Can you share some uh, of those techniques, guys, that you personally? Uh, implement. Um, We're patient. We we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. It's really simple. But uh, you know what? Uh, uh-huh. The good thing is, uh, is uh, I think it's there is n- nothing like uh, like something I can give you and you can apply it uh, directly. But mm-hmm. it's like uh, for me, it was like to understand deeply myself. Mm, mindset. In which mm-hmm. situations I will. For example, lose my patience. So mm-hmm. that means uh, uh, I will avoid uh, being in these situations. Okay. But actually, the good thing is to start understanding myself. Mm, I like that so point. Understand your character. Mm-hmm. Good point, yes. Excellent, guys. And I, I, you know, bringing that point is where it's very important to understand our personality and what might provoke that, what might provoke uh, or stress us to become uh, impatient. Excellent. Mm-hmm. MashaAllah. Thank you very much. Qais, anything else you'd like to mention about patience? Yeah, just uh, be patient with, uh, like with the heat now, nowadays. No. It's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> with the crowded uh, uh, roads. Yes. All the time, mm-hmm. and uh, even uh, during uh, Ramadan, it's really, really good, good way to Learn. to exercise or examine our patience. So we are fasting mm. from morning till, till the sun, sunset. Yes, yeah. yes. So it's really good thing to, to apply this value in this month also. Mashallah, yeah. excellent. That's a great reminder. Thank you very much, uh, Qais. And uh, that was very valuable because those who know Qais, actually, I feel that you have presence. So mm. you're present more in the moment. So I like Barak and inshallah with more success. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for your thank patience you. with us. Thank you, Qais. <laughs> have a lovely right. day. Thank you, Qais. You too, thanks. Shukran, thank you very much. So yeah. in talking about patience, and just to connect with what Qais said and uh, our other discussions, I think it's true to knowing yourself mm-hmm. is very valuable whenever we talk about developing ourselves mm-hmm. because we understand in this example for patients is what will agitate us. Mm-hmm. What agitates us from one person to another might be different. Someone, for example, you mentioned traffic, someone might be fine with traffic mm-hmm. or waiting, someone might not be fine with that. Mm-hmm. So and understand how to work with it. And Qais also shared practical understanding. When he you asked him about filming, mm-hmm. he said, we had a practical understanding that if yeah. it's 10 seconds, it might take us four to five hours. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. Mm. I mean, when Till people... the fruits show. Yeah, yes. when, when people, you know, sit and, and watch those movies and they say they, they start complaining about it. Oh, it's not a good movie or a bad movie. But they don't know how much, you know, work was behind that. I say, this actor is getting a lot of money. Mm. But if they know how much work is involved, they'll say, wow, he's getting less money than he should be getting. Yeah. Well, we can debate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Patiently, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, we'll, and it's um, sabr, patience is strongly mentioned as well, uh, you know, in our faith and Quran and, mm. and where the Prophet said, yes, that peace be upon him. And mm. uh, there's a hadith where the Prophet mentions that there's three kinds mm-hmm. of patience. And one is patience in the time of affliction. Mm-hmm. Uh, so t- in hard times, one is patience in regards to obedience, mm-hmm. doing our acts of worship, and sabr, patience in regards to disobedience, so being patient not to do ill doings. We'll get to that, Adi. We have a call, I believe. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear you. Uh, can you hear us now? Does it sound good? Yes. Can you be a bit be a bit louder, please? My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell the sound engineer. Is that fine? Yes. Welcome, Shaheen. Yeah. Yeah. Shaheen, yeah. welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Fine. Alhamdulillah, Shaheen. So we're talking about patience today? Yeah, that's right. Yes. yes. And I'm Shaheen. 
Yes. And more than a question, I have my perspective to give, if you don't mind. So can I share my perspective on the current topic? We would Please. love that. We would love all that. Right. Go ahead. Yes. First all right. of all, I think most of us are not unaware about the importance of patience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But having said this, when and how does one inculcate this patience? Because one does not get this over a night mm -hmm. when he is 14 or 40. This has to come with an individual as he is growing up at home under the care of his parents. Mm -hmm. So it is the parents then who become role models for that individual, for that child to learn what it is to have patience. Mm -hmm. So it is most importantly the mother's role who, make, who is a role model for the child to know and to show what patience is so that as that individual grows up, he has got this very valuable gift that is inlaid in almost every one of us. It is just the ratio and the level of patience that differs from one individual to the other. Mm -hmm. It is only up to the parents for the child to inculcate this and to increase and improve this as and when he grows. Because as I said earlier, one cannot get this kind of a value overnight or when he is True. suddenly 20 or 40. Mm. True. So I would like to remind our listeners, especially the mothers, mm -hmm. to be a good role model for children. their children, to show patience really when the hour and when the time comes up for the mother to show that patience for the child. Mm -hmm. So when the, pa when the mother tells the child to be patient, the child knows that what is to, it, it is to be patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The child saw that mm -hmm. in their family, in their home. That's right. Correct, correct. Thank you very much for that reminder. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thank you so much for calling in. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Shani. Thank you. Uh, it, it's a reminder how the importance the parents are listening in is that the home is a great opportunity to nurture mm -hmm. uh, these values. And um, as she was talking as well, you know, this image came to my mind of a child who broke a glass. Mm. <laughs> and the, one of the parents might react, why did you do that? Although it, might, it was a mistake, mm -hmm. the child didn't purposely intend to take that glass and, and break yeah. it. And, and sometimes we, we just overlook these examples, but it's in those moments mm -hmm. where there could have been a great lesson um, in patience. Mm. I don't know if you've uh, heard the story of a child who spilled milk, who opened the fridge mm -hmm. and carried a bottle of milk and then spilled it. Mm. And what did the mother do? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> the mother told the child, oh, we spilled the milk, didn't we? Why don't we now? Oh, she said, we spilled the milk. So since it's already spilled, why don't you spend some time playing with it and explore oh. it? And drink it. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so the child was like, oh, okay. So the child played a bit with the milk. And then she said, well, now, since we caused it to be spilled, mm -hmm. and you caused the milk to be spilled, why don't you now clean it up? And she gave him a cloth to clean up the milk. Mm -hmm. And he cleaned up the milk from that. And so in the mother displayed great patience, displayed that here's an incident that happened mm -hmm. that was beyond them. Yeah. So since it happened, it spilled. You want to explore the feeling of the yeah, milk on the floor. Yeah, but like now it. you take responsibility uh, and you clear it. I think when she said that, it reminded me of this story. I, I think I think mm. that, that's a good idea, by the way. I mean, Don't tell your kids <laughs> to spill milk. But <laughs> Well, I did I did something similar to, to, to my nephew. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, well, I didn't tell him to play, but mainly, you know, go and pick up that cloth and just clean and it. And take responsibility yeah, for it. Yeah. Without yeah. screaming or anything. Yeah. But just like, yes, yeah. yeah. Because when you scream, you're not you're not helping yourself. You're not helping the child at all. Mm. You know, because he will get used to that scream every time. Yes. and then he'll just get used to it and say, mm. oh, "It's just going to scream." That's it. And it builds yeah. agitation that when something happens not as expected, you get agitated. Yeah. Rather than learning to deal with the situation, and mm -hmm. like I said, calmly with focus, just deal uh, with the situation. Mm. So Ali, we were talking about how the Prophet peace be upon him defined um, three mm -hmm. kinds of sabr patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, before that, let me just talk uh, about patience in Islam in, in general, as a mm -hmm. general. Uh, patience is, is one of the noblest qualities of the believers. Mm -hmm. uh, it is linked with hope and trust in God. When something bad happens, we can force ourselves to be patient by reminding ourselves that, hey, with hardship comes ease, and that after a period of hardship, God gives relief. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can only be truly patient when we realize that everything is from God. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And behold, with every hardship comes ease. Verily, with every hardship comes ease. So when you have finished, devote yourself to Allah's worship and to your Lord, turn your intentions and hopes. Mm-hmm. Also, so when you read another verse of the Quran where Allah says, Allah is with the patient. Yes. You know that when you, when you embody the characteristic of patience, Allah is taking care of you in ways that you cannot imagine. Mm. So in the trust of yeah, Allah. Yes. So, so, so going yeah. back to the, 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 the different types of patience Actually, in Islam. Actually, just to point on that as mm-hmm. well, is, um, it reminds us because, mashallah, lots of verses of the Quran mention that Allah is with the patient and Allah will reward the patient. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's, it shows us that patience is an important quality uh, for to strengthen our connection with Allah. Mm-hmm. Because when we're patient, we're showing that, Ya Allah, we we trust in you. Mm-hmm. Uh, ya Allah, if, when things happen outside of our control, uh, we know we are in your trust and protection. We understand and will handle with the situation that comes to us. And we see it as a test mm. of how will we be. Will we continue to be believers? Will we continue to be of strong faith? Or mm-hmm. will it weaken us? So it's amazing how it's very important that not just in connection with others, the world around us, but before that, it's in terms of our connection with Allah and how our trust is in Allah. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. patience p- plays a big role in, in terms of you know, the, the test that Allah has given us. Mm-hmm. You know? And the spiritual strength, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so talking about the... Kinds of patience. The kinds of yes. patience. Let me start with the, with the positive one, which is uh, obedience, you know, patience mm-hmm. upon, upon obedience. Uh, this type of patience takes many forms. Mm-hmm. It can be anything that is praiseworthy in, in the religion, whether acts of worship, relationships with people, etc. Et mm-hmm. God wants us to strive for this kind of patience. For example, Qiyam al-Lil, you know, or the, mm-hmm. the night prayer. It's not easy to wake up in the middle of the night and stand for a long time praying. But there's a reward for doing that. And we, mm-hmm. need, to, we need that reward, you know, even for Fajr prayer. Mm-hmm. And it's very difficult sometimes for us to wake up. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so Allah says, Lord of the heavens and the earth, and all that is between them. So worship him alone and be constant and patient in his worship. Do you know of anyone equal to him? Rabbu samawati wal ard, wa ma baynahuma, fa'budhu wastabir li'ibadatih. That's about the mm. patience. And when we talk about um, <clears throat> like obedience, our, our acts of worship, and also when we spoke of the other values, for example, such as forgiveness mm. and guidance. So good acts that are done with the intention of winning the pleasure of Allah is done out of obedience. Mm-hmm. So we spoke, for example, of how forgiveness can be hard, but when we're patient in that, mm. the reward is great. Yeah, and yes. in fact, you can even uh, have that intention, you know, within yourself that, mm. hey, I, I have this intention uh, that I'll be patient in whatever is happening, you know, the the, the, the good things that I need to do. I, I Maybe I'll be waking up in the middle of the night, you know, doing things, sadaqa, charity. Acts of kindness, yeah, acts random of kindness. acts. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. mashallah. <clears throat> And uh, uh, another one, another type of patience is the, the one uh, w- which is uh, stopping ourselves from doing bad. And uh, when we remember that our aim is, is for the life hereafter and not this simple mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. patience becomes easier. Mm-hmm. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned that one, mm-hmm. one of the types of people who is given shade on the Day of Judgment is a person who is tempted into fornication but resists and says, I fear Allah. Mm-hmm. God so because consciousness. Of, so yes. because of fear of Allah, mm. he tried to avoid that. He's been patient because he knows that yeah. there is something better waiting for him. Yes, and we can see also daily examples of to prevent yourself from ill doings. For example, gossip. Mm. Um, it can be so easy to fall into gossip and yeah. to have a good chat about it and but again, it requires patience to kind of pull yourself back uh-huh. and, and talk on a, a different uh, topic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we receive messages every day and sometimes uh-huh. we get so excited about this gossip and say, wow, let me share this. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, it happens. And the third? Um, uh, third one is uh, patience when something bad happens to us, a tribulation. Mm-hmm. It, it is not easy to bear bad news and not lose patience. For example, hearing news about the death of a dear friend. Mm. And uh, that's what happened to me uh, uh, this uh, thir- Thursday. Mm-hmm. I was I was actually in, in a in an event, uh, emceeing a, a show, and 
I got a phone call from my mother, and she she told me that hey, your friend Walid has passed away. Mm-hmm. So Allah yirhamu. Allah yirhamu. So I had this show that I I needed to continue because I was I was controlling the situation, the event, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to you know going and and seeing my friend and being there you know with him with his family. Mm-hmm. But then I t- I said I couldn't you know I just I just needed to go I I, I continued whatever I had in my hand mm-hmm. and I said okay let me just hand over and go to my friend. Subhanallah. Yeah. We'll go back to that. We have a call right now. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Let's Connect. Hi. We, uh, we have with us. Pleasure is mine to have me. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have with us uh, Rami Lawati. How is Ramadan, yes, Rami? Ramadan is perfect. I like working with fasting. <laughs> well, I, wow. Oh, good, good. You need to repeat that many times on air. <laughs> working or fasting, productivity. I love that. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Mashallah. So, so Rami, we're talking about uh, patience. And mashallah, you're from the leading entrepreneurs. You've been in business for many years. And, and it's interesting to connect the concept of patience in business as well, where we are more prone to want quick results but oftentimes as you know as an entrepreneur things don't work out as expected so we'd love to know from your experience with that well uh, first of all thank you for having me uh, and uh, i would like to uh, elaborate on what you asked Mm -hmm. Uh, i always remember um, uh, one day my parents called me um, and it's a very common say what comes fast goes fast oh okay (laughs) right Mm-hmm. And uh, without patience, without waiting for the right development, gradual, always things tend to become, become transactional uh, business where mm-hmm. you depend on the transaction and you get it, you feel happy, you, you change your lifestyle and you, there is no guarantee for this uh, transaction to happen again. Mm-hmm. So once you have the patience and you go through the tough days and all, you'll start realizing that, no, there is more to give, there is more to planning, there is more of step-by-step taking the things, and you'll be able to uh, elaborate and try to understand where, where you're standing, and uh, you, ha- you observe every stage and mm-hmm. plan the next stage. So how do you develop that quality in you? Well, uh, you know, step number one, never give up. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember I read the book of uh, of uh, Richard Bradson. Uh, uh, the book was uh, called uh, "Let's Do It." Let's do it. And his, uh, you know, rule number one: never, never, never give up. Excellent. So once you mm-hmm. start to really um, uh, believing in this, you'll start realizing that yes, for me not to be able to give up, I have to stay on and try to find alternatives. And try not to look at problems as problems, but challenges, mm-hmm. and try to look for solutions instead of complaining about problems. Okay, and I would like to just zoom into the um, understanding of failure, because um, which simply means sometimes that things didn't work out um, as expected, and there is there tends to be fear of failure in here when we talk about starting up a business or as an entrepreneur. Um, and so, how again, if you can share with us your insights or mindset on how you face that. So your question is how how to fight the fear, right? Yeah, uh, the failure exactly, fear of failing, yeah. and and yeah. because you're just impatient and you you want uh, success right away. Well, I define fear fear in two categories. There is a fear of failure and there is a fear of success. A lot of people don't mm. enter the business. Because they're worried that the business will go too big, that they don't know how to handle it. Interesting, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. So both fears are very common, mm-hmm. very available in everyone's mind. Because as human beings, we tend to ha- look at the negative before the positive, mm-hmm. and we stop our life uh, at, the, at it. I remember I was sitting with a friend. He's like, you know, I have this brilliant idea, but it will cost me like ten. 15,000 real. You know, I'm talking about uh, um, maybe six, eight years where no much funds and government support and all of those new campaigns were not available. Mm-hmm. So he came to me, he's like, you know, I want to do that, but I don't have the capital. How much you need? 10 to 15,000 real. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, great. 
I don't know what to do, Yani. Mm-hmm. Then I, a week later, he came to me. I'm buying a congratulations. You can say, tell me, congrats. You congrats me, Rami. Why I'm buying a car? How much you're paying for the car? It's like 15,000 riyal. <laughs> oh, you can afford? Yes, I bought it on an installment. I'm like, why didn't you take the loan to, mm-hmm. take, uh, to open your business and pay on an installment? Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's risky. I'm like, again, your car is getting depreciated. Interesting. You lose the money anyway. Uh-huh. There, you lose it or you'll gain it or double it or you make your new future. Mm. So again, the awareness gap is there mm-hmm. uh, in the market. It is getting really different, especially from the new generation. I'm interviewing a lot of people, a lot of gra- fresh graduates. And you can see the difference in their their thinking. They're more ambitious. They're more uh, they're more understanding that there are more options than getting a job and mm-hmm. securing a life and getting married and kids and family and all of that. Mm-hmm. So back to the sailor. Sailor is something that you have to find yourself, and you have to see how you can fight it. Mm-hmm. And all can happen with a proper planning. If you plan it right, mm-hmm. the fear will start reducing, reducing and the confidence will start increasing because it's not you who are you deciding because of what you feel. Mm-hmm. You started taking decisions based on the numbers which are in your computer or in front of your eyes, which helps you taking that decision. Mm. And it goes back to what you said that it's a practical way of going about it. You plan, you, you know, you take it step by step and it it actually helps you stay patient because you're making progress. You're taking steps forward. You're not just sitting back. Indeed. Mm. Indeed. You know, think big, start small, act now. Yes. Say that again. Think. Think big. Yes. Start small, Mm -hmm. but act now. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. Don't act tomorrow. Act now. Yes, I agree. Indeed. (laughs) Indeed. Indeed. Excellent. MashaAllah, Rami. Anything else you want to uh, final remarks about patience? Well, um, um, I think life is short. Mm-hmm. Life is worth risk taking risks. Mm-hmm. Take it when you're young. Take it when it's never late. Mm-hmm. It's better you take it when you're uh, young and you might change your gener- generations to come to life. Mm-hmm. A lot of people started from scratch. And they made it, and now not only their them or not their kids, even their grandkids are uh, secured in life because yes. of a small risk that the grandfather took. Mm-hmm. So why don't you be that grandfather one day? Mm-hmm. And then, um, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. the options are a lot, and then the opportunities are all, all around, and you just have to put things together, plan it, plan it, plan it right. Excellent. Mm. Spend most of your energy on planning it and you will make it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Rami. And I must say that because I follow Ice Cream Mama as well in the social media. And when I'm fasting and I see those yummy photos, it's a test of my Why patience did too. did you remind me of that? I'm losing my patience. <laughs> it's a test of patience. <laughs> and I purposely sent it on the fast. Oh, yes, he did. He did, he did actually. He I did feel, do that. I feel like having it at that time, I'm like, hmm, why I suffer? Let everyone suffer with me, you see? <laughs> oh, no, it's good. You help us exercise patience. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rami. Thank Great. you for being part Great. of the show. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me again and I wish you all the best. Thank you too. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. That was lovely. And a point he also mentioned is um, being inspired by others. Mm-hmm. That, you know, he used examples. And I think it does help us nurture patients mm-hmm. when we hear stories of how others were yeah, patient. And yeah. I know in our, you know, Islamic stories, we have many examples of that. Uh, if we have time, we can talk about Prophet Ayyub. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and also it's inspiring to hear about people who succeeded in something you want to succeed at mm-hmm. or you want to develop and be inspired by their story. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, Prophet Ayyub, peace be upon him, uh, he was known actually for his patience. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ayyub, or maybe for some people who don't know what, who Ayyub is, mm-hmm. his job, maybe mm-hmm. in English, uh, who, he, he's the one who lost all 14 of his children, you know, his wealth and the companionship of the people because of his disease. He had this disease. Mm-hmm. Yet when he was asked to supplicate for God to heal him, he said, Allah gave me 50 years of blessings. Should I not be patient with the same number of years of hardship? 
He, he, nev he never complained of his illness, mm -hmm. nor was he angry with God or questioned his will. He just accepted it. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, if we, if, if we imagine ourselves going through that, I mean, just losing one child, mm -hmm. it's very painful. Yeah. Imagine losing all your children, your possessions, and also getting very ill. I believe some narrations say 13 or 17 or 18 years where mm -hmm. he was, um, you know, yeah, severely yeah. ill. And that's just the ultimate test of patience yeah. because, um, you know, there's narrations where he said oh, he is grateful because now there's nothing between him and Allah. That's mm -hmm. directly his connection oh, to Allah. So he, he, he actually... He used to be rich, yeah? He used to have uh, lots wealthy, of possessions, lots of possessions. And, yes, and he actually yeah. saw that as it brought me closer to Allah. And it's Allah. it's uh, testing my patience. And yeah. it goes back to how our mindset is can help us become patient. And let's let's not forget uh, Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. you know, as, as a best example. Yes. I mean, his father died before his birth. Uh, his mother died when he was only six years old. And mm. his grandfather, who, lo who who took up his guardianship, also died soon. Then yes. his wife Khadija and his uncle Abu Talib. Again, all of his, his children died mm. in, a, in his lifetime except Fatima. Mm. Yet he was always smiling and, and never hesitated to help, help people. He never questioned the, the, will, the, God, the will of God. I mean, during his 13 years of life in Mecca as a messenger of God, mm -hmm. he, he faced all forms of abuse, boycott, expulsion, and, and threats of physical violence. And yet... He was nice and gentle, even to his enemies. Mm -hmm. he, he spent all his wealth on the poor for, and, and for da'wah. And, and he would spend three months living on water and dry dates. If he could not find any dates, mm -hmm. what would he do? He would fast and he would put a rope mm -hmm. around his stomach yes. to kill that, those pains, pains of hunger. Mm -hmm. All that did not affect his character. He was patient in doing good patient and refraining from evil and was patient when afflicted with calamity yeah. and it, the best thing is for us to imagine ourselves going through that mm -hmm. because sometimes we say oh, okay lovely inspiring stories but then we kind of detach mm -hmm. from it but to really imagine what if we went through that how would we have responded to that and what we can learn from it and it reminds me of the well of the um um the saying of the prophet as well peace be upon him is that the real patience is at the first stroke of calamity. Mm. And again, uh, we can evaluate ourselves as when we're facing a calamity. Mm. Do we start complaining right away? Or do we start, you know, questioning why? Or did we just say, Alhamdulillah, yeah. and we will deal with it. And if, if we can see and have an honest look within ourselves, how did we react when we first... Um, so it's the first reaction. The, yes. the moment you hear the news, test, yes, yeah, or face something, or someone says something, and then how are we able to yeah. to handle it? And that helps us, like I said, it's a process mm -hmm. to keep working on ourselves and understanding uh, ourselves. And I think if we want to talk about as well nurturing this value more, is the mm -hmm. concept of saying Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. um, praise be to Allah, being grateful, and. At times, you know, someone asks you, oh, how are you doing? You say, oh, alhamdulillah. So mm. someone says it kind of in a sign of negative connotation. Ah, oh, we're fine, despite what things are. Not in a positive way, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. That despite everything, there are still blessings in our life. Yeah, I still have my eyes. I, I'm still walking. I'm still mm -hmm. moving, you know. I still have few people in my life who I can, yes. you know, be with and trust with. And in the case of Ayub, when he didn't have anything, he yeah. said, I still have my connection to Allah. To Allah. That's exactly. the, the main thing, yeah. And I think it's, if we practice gratefulness as well, we'll talk about it later, but even when things are going well, mm -hmm. I think that can help us build our patience because we're having this mindset of gratitude. So even when something happens, mm -hmm. we can still be in that mindset. We can still be present, connected with ourselves, mm -hmm. and then handle the situation. Yeah. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, how wonderful is the case of a believer. There mm -hmm. is good for him in everything. And mm -hmm. this applies only to a believer. If something good happens to him, he is thankful for it. And that is good for him. If something bad happens to him, he bears it with patience. And that is good for him. Mashallah. Subhanallah. 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 And, and another example is from uh, chapter 2, verses 155 to 157 uh, from the Quran. It says, And we shall test you with something of fear hunger, loss of wealth, lives, and fruits. 
but give glad tidings to as-sabirin, meaning the patient. Mm -hmm. When afflicted with calamity, they say, truly, to Allah we belong, and truly, to him we shall return. They are those whom are the salawat of their Lord, and receive his mercy, and are the guided ones. Subhanallah. Mm. Subhanallah. So, so Allah actually mentioned, you know, the type of uh, of problems and tribulations that we that might have, face. Yeah. Yes. Fear, hunger, loss of wealth, mm. and lives. You know, fruits like food, risk. Yes. It's, yes. It's all part of the our daily life. Yeah. It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it, we, because we mentioned as well, talking about Rami as well, fear mm -hmm. uh, of failure, and it's oftentimes when things don't turn as expected, mm -hmm. we will oftentimes be tested with that. Yeah. And to see yeah. how we handle it. Yeah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And 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 I, and I like uh, the fact that uh, the brother mentioned about uh, fear of success. You know, I never mm. thought of it because it changes yeah. your lifestyle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you don't just changed. fear the failure. Oh, uh, when am I going to start business? But you're already in there, mm. and, and you just fear what's happened. You know, what's the next step? Mm. You know, and how can I sustain yeah. it and maintain it? As, yeah. Yes. But but it all needs to be. Pl you know, it's all about planning. You know, it's mm. it's like planting a seed. You know, then you water it. Then you leave it for some time. And then, and only when all right elements are in place, that seed turns into a fruit. Mm. SubhanAllah, to just talk more about that example, is that if someone has attained success and has what they wanted, that they can still be impatient mm -hmm. because they're afraid of losing that or afraid of how to maintain that. And again, it has to go back to trust to have in Allah and to be present in the mm -hmm. moment and <clears throat> to do the best that we can, to show up in the best way possible that we can at the present moment. Yeah, and, and we need to understand that patience can actually reduce your stress levels mm -hmm. and, and it, it improves your health. It can actually make you feel even happier. Yes. You know, when, when you're impatient, when you, when you don't achieve what you want immediately, you actually get slowed down and then you lose interest. Mm -hmm. But uh, whenever you find yourself growing impatient, Think about the positive effects of patience. Mm. And remember that impatience only makes things worse. Mm, yes, and it can impact our decision making. Mm -hmm. And life is all about decisions. Every day we're making choices, yeah, decisions. I, I mean, that's the thing about, you know, uh, losing your patience. You start making quick decisions. You know, you, 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 you're breathing fast, your mm. muscle tensions, and you have this, your hands starts clenching, and mm. then you become angry and nervous, and then suddenly you make a quick decision. Blah, that's it. Without mm. thinking Haste. about it. Haste, yes. Haste. Mm -mm, yeah. Reacted. Yeah. You react very quickly. SubhanAllah. And talking about time, time has passed. <laughs> we oh. need to wrap up the show today. Oh. Any final remarks, Adi? Yeah, now uh, we need to understand that nature doesn't work instantly mm -hmm. and we are part of nature. We operate on the same schedule, the same platform. We start off as instant, uh, as infants, grow as adults, age, and then we pass on. Just like aspects of nature. Mm -hmm. So let's slow down so we could have an opportunity to see many wonderful things on the way. Things that we might miss out if we rushed. Do not worry when things do not happen as quick as we expect it to happen because nothing and no one is perfect except God. Mm. Allah said, Inni jazaytuhumul yawma bima sabaru annahum humul faizun. Verily, I have rewarded them this day for their patience. They are indeed the ones that are successful. MashaAllah, thank you very much, uh, Ali. And on that note, as we wrap up the show, let's remind ourselves to be God conscious in every day in our lifestyle to help us be present in the moment and to help us, inshallah, live that inner peace through patience. So, from all of us here, this is your host, Reem Audi with Ali Al Faray and the sound engineer, Safiya Al Hapsi, with peace and love and patience. Ma Salama. Radio. Sultan of Oman 90.4 FM is all set to bring you Let's Connect. Let's Connect. A soul searching program which is about a journey of self discovery hosted by Reem. 12 noon to 1 p.m. Sunday to Thursday. Send your questions to 90406 or call us at 246 02058. Let's connect here on the nation station.